audio is the most important thing when it comes to video. And today we're going to go over the Shure MV7 and we're going to talk about how I think this is a great microphone and you should be getting this next. Inspired by the legendary SM7B, the MV7 uses USB and XLR outputs for use with computers and professional interfaces. The SM7B was a legend in 2007 and 2008 when podcasting became popular. People talked about it. Gamers got a hold of it. It was advertised as a voiceover microphone and was even used by Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones during recordings. Today, the MV7 took all of the good things that made the SM7B popular with podcasters and updated it with a new body. It's a dynamic microphone that's designed to capture loud, strong sounds like drums and loud vocals. On the back, you'll find an XLR balance output, headphone monitoring jack, and a micro B jack that leads to a computer's USB port. The whole microphone is plug and play and you don't need an app to run it. The MV7 is great to jump right into for the new generation that just wants to plug a microphone into the computer. In the package, it comes with a 10 foot micro B to USB C cable and a 10 foot micro B to USB A cable. It comes in black or silver with a full metal body finish. A Sure Plus Motive app allows you to set up additional features such as vocal tone and compression levels. It's advertised as the perfect microphone for situations where low background noise is present like from a refrigerator or a hum from a fan. There's two types of microphones, dynamic and condenser microphones. Dynamic microphones give you that voiceover sound where the high ends rolls off. Dynamic microphones perform really well in noisy environments because they tend to not be sensitive to background noise. Now, a shock mount is built in and it's hard to pop. Now, by pop, I mean what's common when you speak into a microphone is all your P sounds make a popping sound. And with this particular microphone, it was really hard to get that to happen. I really love this microphone and it made a huge difference in the quality of my videos versus the shotgun microphones I typically use on my camera. So I bought two of these microphones originally with the intent to use them for podcasting. I got really lucky. So when I went on to eBay, I found one for $175, which included the upgraded pop filter. I also bought a silver one refurbished from B&H Photo for $207. Typically, the retail price for these microphones go for $249. So I definitely found a bargain when I got these used and refurbished. Now these microphones have a great flexibility for either XLR or for computers. So whenever you spend your time in a recording studio or anything else, this is perfect. I like how these microphones literally does all the work for me, especially with the Sure Plus Moto app, which is the app that the, you can use to use these microphones. Where if you just want to record with little to no editing, you can do it with this. Audio is deep and rich, especially when you put the microphone right up towards your mouth for podcasts like audio. But you can't connect this directly to your camera, and I don't recommend you try to find a way to do it. If you plan to use the XLR to headphone jack adapter, don't. It's going to sound bad. You have controls right on a microphone if you need to mute or you need to increase or decrease the microphone gain. This microphone is great for voiceovers or to improve your Zoom meeting presentations. I found that this microphone definitely makes my content more professional with the better audio. It's a dynamic, omnidirectional microphone so it only picks up the sound right in front of you, kind of like a, like a little bubble. So basically you have to imagine that with these microphones, it just takes uh, if the microphone was right here, it would just take uh, simply the surrounding area or surrounding sound. The quality of the audio does drop if you go further and further away from it. There's a couple ways you can set up this microphone. You can set it up on your desk, you can set it on an arm stand, or you can set it up on a tripod. You want to make sure the microphone stays right in front of you. If you try to move the microphone side to side, it's not going to pick up your sound very well. Don't put this microphone right in front of your mouth because it's not designed to do that. It's designed to be placed right on the side. 
So you want to be talking past it as opposed to talking towards it. Something I don't like about this particular microphone is the fact that the branding is on the side. Now, if you look back to the SM7B, it's a completely black body with a metal finish. For the MV7, the logo is plastered on both sides of the microphone. So it loses that look that you want if you plan to video record your podcast. I personally would like to have been black like the SM7B, but it's not a big deal. There are some do-it-yourself hacks where you can actually black out the, the logo. Now, the key difference between the SM7B and the MV7 is that the MV7 is designed to pick up vocals and singing, whereas the SM7B is more on the low ends, like picking up the bass or drums. Another key feature of this microphone is that it's really great at playing back dad jokes and I have a great sample of it right here. I cut down a tree just by staring at it. I swear, I saw it with my own eyes. A biggie point out. Uh, a big point to point out is that I've tested this microphone out of the box and I didn't like it. I made a huge improvement to my audio by switching out the foam covering with a pop filter found on the SM7B. Once I did that, I felt like I heard a huge difference in my sound quality. I recommend buying the pop filter designed originally for the SM7B as it fits and it makes your audio 10 times better on the MV7. I think you'll thank me later if you do so. And it's only $14 on eBay. Right now, you're hearing the audio unedited. The only thing I've done to this audio is I've increased the gain so that way it just normalized. The microphone did all of the work for me via the Motive app. And if you are someone that edits audio and post, you know how long it can take to clean it up. There's two components to the MV7, the microphone and the app. And if you really want to get the most out of this microphone, you want to use the app. And the best thing is it's free. What's really great about this microphone also is that you can plug in your smartphone. You can set this microphone on a table stand, a tripod, or an arm stand. And it all depends on what you're doing. When I want the microphone out of frame but close to me, I set up on an arm stand and position the microphone just above my head. I do that with a 48 inch Samson arm stand that I bought off of uh, Amazon. And if you're interested in knowing about that brand, I'll go and put it in the description below. For voiceovers where I don't have to be on camera, I like to have the microphone on its stand on a table. A minor complaint I have about this microphone is a carrying case. Now for me, I like to keep everything in carrying cases. I haven't been able to find any storage cases designed for the MV7 or at least two MV7s. I would prefer to have it in a harder case. Compared to other microphones, I had considered the Blue Yeti, which has a huge number of reviews on Amazon, but I didn't get it because it didn't look good. And where visuals are really important for me, I got the MV7 instead. Now we talked about the microphone itself, so let's shift over to the SurePlus Motive app, which is free to download. Now this app has two modes, auto and manual mode. Auto is great so that way you don't have to fiddle around with it too much, and manual is if you want to full control, especially those that plan to do post editing. I personally like to use the manual because I like to change the way I sound on my microphone depending on what I'm doing. But for those who are new and just want to get started while sounding great, definitely just take advantage of the auto mode. Now in my next video, I'm going to go over in detail the settings in the Shure Moto app and how each setting makes your voice sound. So definitely subscribe so that way when the next video comes out, you'll be there to see it. In the meantime, we're just going to go over the app. Now if you look at the app, there's just two main settings. There's the auto mode and the manual mode. With auto mode, you basically just have to select how far your microphone is for you. For the near mode, it's a matter of being zero to six inches away from the microphone. And as for far mode, it's six inches to 18 inches. So depending on how far you place in the microphone, definitely click the appropriate button. Now, if you look at the bottom, there's natural, dark, and bright. So natural is just basically mm, your voice pretty much unedited, whereas the bright is where the presence has been increased or boosted. And dark is, it brings out more of the baser sound. So it's very great if you're doing voiceovers, kind of like a um, movie uh, movie voiceover. Now, if we look over the manual app, the manual has a lot more different options. One of the great things about this one is the equalizer. You can leave it as balance or flat. You have the rollover, which basically minimizes background noise, like a fan in the background or a refrigerator humming in the back. And then you have 
presence, which is basically bringing out the mid-tones and makes your voice a little bit more, so to speak, brighter. Besides that, you have, of course, microphone game. You can mute the microphone and also you can set compression. Now, again, we're not going to cover too much about the details about this app. We'll just cover it on a next video next week. The one thing that's sure MV7 has that no other microphone brand has is this rich lineage in vocals. The MV7 has its history dating back to 1966 with the SM5, which was used as a broadcast microphone for radio stations. Even though it was the size of a football, it was well loved by those in the industry. Sure wanted to develop a lighter and cheaper microphone, but with the same quality, which led to the SM7 in 1972. A fun fact is that a lot of Mick Jagger studio recordings for the Rolling Stones was with the SM7. In the mid 90s, Sure had to make updates to this SM7 because at the time, radio studios were starting to use monitors that would emit low frequencies that the microphone would pick up. This resulted in the SM7A and then eventually the SM7B. After years of success in the music label industry, in 2020, Sure saw a need to upgrade the SM7B to meet today's needs to plug and play with a computer, which has led to the MV7. You'll see a huge difference in your audio quality with the microphone right out of the box with no additional hardware or software. But if you're a newbie or someone that doesn't want to spend a whole lot of time cleaning up your audio, this microphone could be for you. The MV7, unlike the SM7B, can be used with computers, which makes it great for those who don't have the time to mess around with a preamp or mixer. I think this is a great microphone if you want the flexibility of recording on your computer or more professional equipment like a mixer. And it's also a great way to get the qualities and awesomeness of the legendary SM7B. It's specifically designed for speech and vocals where it enhances mid-range sounds. The huge benefit is that it doesn't pick up background noise like a condenser microphone, but you are gonna pay more to get that quality. So this microphone works best in a furnished room so that any sound that's not reaching the microphone doesn't bounce back at you, or at least the furniture is gonna absorb as much as it can. So if you have a furnished room with a carpet, couch, or pillows, whatever is in the room, it's gonna to help to absorb some of that sound which limits your reverb and your kind of basically tunnel sound. I tried this microphone in a less than furnished room and it had reverb or echo, which didn't bring out the best in the microphone, which basically means that even if you have the best microphone, even if you have the MV7, which is a great microphone, your audio is still gonna be bad if you just pick any place to record. I find that this microphone works best if it's really close to your mouth. Anything beyond 18 inches between you and that microphone and you start to lose audio quality. So if you can, set up this as a boom mic over your head. I set this up in my studio on an arm stand just above my head and it was great. If you're unsure of how to set up this microphone with the app, auto level mode is perfect and keeps your audio consistent throughout the recording. I spent almost no time post editing besides increasing and normalizing the gain ever since I got this microphone. I think you should buy this microphone if you're thinking about getting a microphone where audio quality is important. Now the thing is, I'm not affiliated with Shure, I'm not sponsored to say anything, I'm just happy with this product. For its amazing features, extraordinary sound quality, clean aesthetics, and the flexibility for use with professional equipment and computers, I give it five stars. If you have questions about this microphone or you need a little bit more help with it, definitely leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help. Next week, I'm gonna go over the best settings you can use to get the most out of this microphone on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, click the uh, like button. And if you enjoy my videos, click the subscribe button. I don't get paid for this, but clicking the subscribe lets me know that I'm doing something right. I just wanna send a quick shout out to my recent new subscribers. Salsa Crazy, Stas, Albert of course, thanks for subscribing. If you subscribe to my channel, I'll be sure to thank you in my next video.